Hello friends, how's it going? Katie Rubin here, your friendly neighborhood modern mystic, energy healer, divine light channel, Akashic Records reader, and all around sass mistress. So as those of you who follow this particular thread know, what I do when I pull a three card spread for y'all is I open the Akashic Records of the group of you. I ask the consciousness of all that is to open the divine channel for all the people who are going to uh, hear this reading and benefit from it and for whom it is delivered. I don't know who you are. I just can feel the energy of you when I open into the records of the group of you. So there's a couple things I want to say about this particular reading um, before I show you the cards that got pulled. But the first, so the first is that huh, the main energy here and gist that was coming through the Akashic records and the beings of light therein for everybody hearing this reading is compassion and mercy, compassion and mercy, compassion and mercy. The record keepers are talking about for this reading, it's like so much energy of like, hey, honey, baby, boo-boo, sweetie, chickadee, sugar pants, plum fairy, it's gonna be okay. It, it's gonna be okay. Take it easy, expand a little bit, relax, one, foot in front of the other, it's all going to play out okay. You're going to be fine. It just can feel like maybe not. That's the sort of overall gist of this three card spread. Now that being said, <coughs> excuse me, here's the card of the recent past, <coughs> the making a choice card, which reminds me of our reading last week. We had a similar something in this position. Recent past, making a choice, current moment, magic prayer, Oof, I love that card. It's so sweet and lovely and connected to divine light. Um, protecting treasure is the outcome card. So again, the whole energy here that I get for you for this week is compassionate mercy for the self and for everything you're going through. So let's read what the deck here, my favorite deck, uh, the Enchanted Map Oracle Cards Guidebook has to say about each of these cards. So the Making a Choice card is pretty straightforward. In the recent past, <clears throat> you've been required to come to a decision. You're faced with a dilemma or a fork in the road and must make a conscious choice regarding the next right action. Whatever that choice is, you must take responsibility for it. Yet, you needn't be afraid. You may not have all the answers right now because the way ahead can't be known until you've embarked and traveled a few steps. Trust your intuition. Ask for a sign from spirit and you will be led to the right path. If you remain conscious and aware, your choice will be the right one at this time. Life is always about learning. Success lies in choosing consciously, guided by intuition and spirit. I'm going to read that again. Success lies in choosing consciously, guided by intuition and spirit. <laughs> you know, a lot of times human beings think success is what the outside world says success is. I would argue and I would offer that success is you feeling good in your life. You feeling like you're where you're meant to be. You feeling aligned and fulfilled with what's occurring in your life. Or at least you feeling like you're on the path toward that. You can have all the worldly success and that's, that's like 10 air quotes. Air quotes are two finger. This is you get 10 air quotes. You can have all the worldly success in the world, all the money, all the status, all the power, and be really not feeling right. Not feeling right for you. Not feeling in alignment for you. It's not to say that worldly success and status and power and money are bad. They're not. We want, we want to feel like we get seen and, and acknowledged for the work we do. We want to be abundant in our resources. But we sometimes don't acknowledge when we already are. I am certainly guilty of this a fair amount of the time and the universe is very gentle and loving with me and always pulling me back to like, oh, right, I have so much gratitude for what I have now. Spending a lot of time in what I wish I had or where I'm trying to go, boy, you get miserable pretty fast. Now that doesn't mean don't strive for things you desire. It's about how we're holding the striving of the desiring things. 
Are you holding it lightly? Like, that would be nice to have that. And I'm so grateful today for all of this. Or are you holding it like, I can't rest and I'm not okay and I don't exist and I'm not blah, 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 until I'm there, until I'm there. And then if you live your life like this, guess where you never are? <sighs> in the moment that you're in. And then you miss all the good juju. All right, so you've been making a decision in the recent past. In the current moment, we have the energy for you of the magic prayer and what a lovely energy it is. Speak your prayers, it says. Listen for the answers, act in faith. <sighs> when you see the magic prayer card, it is a reminder that your prayers will be answered. Isn't that nice? You guys all got this card. Your prayers will be answered. That's nice. It's not always the case. <laughs> <clears throat> Spirit is always waiting to help you and to heal you when you're in need. That said, m the best prayer is, thy will be done through me. Thy will, not mine, be done. I mean, conscious contact with your higher power is achieved through the ritual of prayer and meditation. Speak and listen to the divine force within the field of creation. Surrender your wishes and desires to Spirit. You may not get what you want, but you will surely get what you need. Your destiny awaits you. As long as you keep in conscious contact with your higher power, be assured that you are on the right path. And you know what I hear inside of that card is, there's a really deep teaching inside of that card. People go to like, you know, what's it called? Montessori, mon, 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 what's it called? Montessori. Fucking A. What's it called when the monks go to the monastery? God, my brain. <sighs> monastery for years. I went to Sufi healing school for years and 12 step for years and therapy for years just to learn the concept of what's in this silly little card, which is to say, I'll put it, I'll speak for my, I'll give you a personal example of how, what this I think is actually saying. When I'm real agitated because I want something and I'm trying for it and I'm busy getting it, but I'm agitated, or when I'm like super impatient about something, like why isn't it happening? Why don't I know yet? Why am I not there yet? The spiritual path doesn't take us to the answer or the outcome we want. What it does is it reorients us into surrender. So in other words, if I'm feeling like, what's the answer? Where am I going? What's next? What do I do now? Why isn't it coming? When's it coming? When I get back into my spiritual alignment, I have peace internally about the fact that it's not here yet. And then from that peaceful place that is aligned with the flow of reality, I'm able to move forward in a more gentle way that allows the universe to contribute to me. So... Um, it's, I, I keep coming back to impatience because this comes up a lot for me personally. Anytime I'm impatient, I know I got to sit in the divine light and give my impatience and my need for an outcome that I want to the divine. And every time I do that, I think, I don't want to do this. I don't want to sit here. I don't want to do spiritual shit. I just want the thing I want. You know, like I want my rugs to arrive on time for the healing retreat. I want them now. <laughs> <clears throat> but they're not coming in time for the healing retreat. So you know what? People are going to have a great experience on the healing retreat, even without the rugs. But how do I get to peace around that? Personally, I come back to my spiritual alignment. I give it over to the divine. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, you know what? Nobody really cares about rugs except for me. They're going to be fine in that healing space that's stunning and gorgeous that I've put together that does not need rugs, but eventually will need rugs. Nobody cares. Or they might care, but they're not, it's not going to break them either way. But I don't get to that without that spiritual connection and the surrender that comes as a result of the connection. You know, people in 12-step used to say to me all the time, just let it go. Just let it go. Just surrender. Sur turn it over. Turn your will in your life over. And I'd be like, if I could surrender, let go, or turn it over, I would not be sitting here listening to you people talk. I can't let it go. So then the question that arose for me, which sent me to my first healing school, was how do we let things go if we are stubborn, willful bastards, I'm talking about me now, who don't like to let stuff go 
and who frankly don't have a great capacity with letting stuff go. The answer I discovered in the first healing school I went to, you get connected to the river of the divine light through your own practice, whatever that is. And by connecting to the river of your own river of divine light, however you align with source, the letting go happens organically as a result of tapping in spiritually. It's not the other way around. You don't get to go like, I let go, and then the river of light shoots into your body. I mean, sometimes that happens, but not on the regular, on a normal Tuesday. Sometimes you've got to put yourself in the river of light. You put your boat angrily and crankily in the river of light through your spiritual practice. Then all of a sudden you'll be a patience and grace and flow and receptivity and divine feminine. That's how that works. And that's what I hear this saying. It's like, your prayers are going to be answered. Just line up with spirit and then relax. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. Protecting treasure is the outcome. Let's see what the deck has to say about that. You are always protected and divinely directed. Although this is a time of great risk, sure is for me. Know that at a fundamental level, you are able to move forward safely and securely. Isn't that sweet? The proverbial nest egg is safe and sound, no matter the fluctuations in the world. Guardian angels and other guides are whispering to you, making you aware of their protective presence. Your loyalty is an important theme now. Your loyalty is an important theme now. Nurture that which you hold dear. This is a good time to strengthen bonds of friendship and ensure their integrity. If you feel tested right now, know that a true and loyal heart always achieves its aim. Take refuge under an angel's wing. You're not alone and you have no need to fear. Embrace your courage. Oh, the nest egg is safe and sound. Guardian angels and guides are whispering to you, making you aware, aware of their presence. Strengthen bonds of friendship and integrity. You're always protected and divinely directed. Take refuge under an angel's wing. No need to fear. Embrace your courage. Look, I didn't want to bring up the election because I'm not a fan of talking about that kind of thing, but you gotta sometimes. That's what this is about. We're all up against it. It's coming up in a real short amount of minutes. But the nest egg is protected. Hunker down with your friends. Take refuge under an angel's wing. You're being taken care of. You're going to be okay. You might feel like this lady sitting on top of your golden chest, hunkered down, terrified with a little sad umbrella that you think is going to protect you from the huge thunderbolts. What if you don't need the umbrella because you are protected? Personally, I've never known a way to feel protected without getting directly in touch with the river of light. I like to call it the river of light lately. God, the divine, the spirit, the source, the energy, the love, the universe, whatever you want to call it. I don't, I, Katie Rubin, the kind of trauma I have in my history that has been healed, but like certain parts of it always remain with us. And that's what makes us who we are and puts us on our path. I don't have a way to feel protected and relaxed without a connection to source. But, and when I feel connected to source, all there is is relaxation, peace, ease, flow, protection, abundance, etc. So remember, you've had to make a choice in the recent past. You're in the middle of making a bunch of magic prayers that are being heard. Make sure you make them though. If you don't make prayers, they can't be heard. And the outcome is you're okay. It may feel like, fuck, I don't think I'm okay, but you are okay. They're telling you you're okay. The proverbial nest egg is protected. Take refuge under an angel's wing when you feel shaky and unsafe. It's gonna be okay, everybody, truly. It really, really is. Even if in the short term, it's not okay. Remember that when things are not okay, it's actually okay that they're not okay. If you can surrender into the not okayness of the moment you're in, suddenly the not okayness becomes not so not okay. <laughs> Track that sentence. The shorter way to say that is if you can accept the pain you're struggling with, the fear, the anxiety, the fear, anxiety, and pain diminish and become less 
of what they were before. So you're okay. It's going to be okay. You're divinely protected. Remember, there's no real answers, protection, care, flow, or ease without a connection to source. So if you're struggling and you keep thinking, I'm going to fix my external reality and that'll make it all better, how's that working for you? Sometimes you have to do things in your external reality, but they don't fix the internal lack of peace. There's only one thing that fixes that, and it's our connection to the all that is. So I pray that you find ease and flow in connecting with your way of connecting to the all that is. Join us for three days of energy healing this coming weekend, November 6th to the 8th in Mancus, Colorado. You got to be here in person for this one. So check out katierubin.com forward slash star dash beings. <laughs> katierubin.com forward slash star dash beings for info on that. Check out All the Answers podcast, my podcast with the amazing Cassidy Jamal Brown. This week we have um, one of the most amazing, talented rapper musicians I've ever known. The most amazing one I've ever known personally. His name is Carlos Aguirre, otherwise known as MC Infinite. Please follow MC Infinite on Instagram. God damn, is he talented. MC Infinite. And the word MC is spelled out E-M-C-E-E, -E, Infinite on Instagram if you're ready to be blown away. <clears throat> he comes on the podcast and has like excellent boundaries and doesn't let me read his records and it's freaking great. Check it out everywhere you get your podcasts and katierubin.com anytime you're ready for a reading and or an energy healing. I love you. I support you. You're not alone. Take care, everybody.